Thank you, thank you for that uh, lovely invitation, and I'm delighted to be here. Uh, Turkey is an incredibly important ally to the United States, and uh, year before last, I, I attended the World Conference for the United Nations on Population and Women's Issues, and had an opportunity to address the delegations there. I was representing the United States, and it was an incredible experience to be in Turkey with one country that really uh, touches three different continents. It's the only country that does that. And we had an incredible uh, time seeing the history and the future uh, of Turkey. So I'm, I'm delighted to, to be here and to join with you during, during these times. I was asked to talk about the economy. Uh, we know that under Clinton, we had one of the best, the best economy in, in my lifetime. We were at peace. Uh, we had left it with a huge surplus, billions of dollars, no wars. Uh, and everyone, uh, unemployment was almost uh, non-existent. And then we had a change in government, and when they left, we were trillions of dollars in debt, and we were in two wars. Uh, I am pleased that President Obama has started moving up from what I call that deep red valley, where we were losing roughly 8.18 million jobs. And we've slowly been working our way out. We've had 45 months of economic growth in the private sector, uh, not enough, but it's moving in the right direction, and, and, and unemployment is falling, and efforts to uh, help people get jobs are, are improving. Since there's so many young people, I, I want to focus a little bit on education. Uh, in the Joint Economic Committee and all our studies, your success in life is very much tied to your degree of education. If you have a college education, you're almost assured a job, and the difference in, in long-term economic growth for families that just have a high school education and a college ed edu education are, are, are deep and strong and almost unbelievable. Uh, so my message to you is to stay in school, get your degrees, and get yourself educated so that you have a skill that you can use. There's a lot of attention being given to a Tennessee governor who came out and guaranteed every student in his country two years of college and after that, a, a training in a trade. Uh, but I was looking at our CUNY system here in New York, that's the state and federal education system. 60% of our students go to school really without paying a dime. With the Pell Grant, which is roughly $5,500 5, a year, you can go to school, graduate without a huge debt, and, and go on with your careers. So the, the information and the data on how well you do is very much tied to, to your opportunities and, and to your ability to get, get an education. Uh, we, we are working hard in many areas, but uh, one of my key areas is infrastructure. It's certainly a national uh, platform, a national goal of President Obama's to, to have more infrastructure projects. But in my district alone, the two largest transportation projects, not in New York City, not in New York State, but in the entire country, are in the district that I'm privileged to represent. That's the Second Avenue subway, the East Side connector. Those two projects alone are guaranteeing or supplying over 100,000 good-paying jobs, and uh, I'm proud of that. We just secured 650 million for the Kaskushko Bridge. Any of you travel that bridge between Queens and Williamsburg, Brooklyn? Um, it's always backed up, so we're going to modernize that and turn a six-lane into an eight-lane and make it a modern 21st-century uh, bridge. And I, I recently got a $300 million grant uh, down payment for, for building the Second Avenue subway between, between New York and Boston. And I can't think of an economic development project that would bring more jobs uh, than that. In addition, uh, I, I work with the mayor on shifting our economy, not just focused on financial services, but moving to high tech. And the first high tech higher education university is being built in my district on Roosevelt Island. We gained hundreds of millions of dollars, good paying jobs, and a very strong investment in the future. Um, I've worked hard to bring a health care clinic to a public housing project in Queens that I represent, Queens Bridge Houses. And uh, that's the first in New York State to be in a public housing project. And with this new administration, uh, we are working very hard on public housing that was really being ignored. They were coming in and trying to turn the open space into high-income housing, not investing in public housing at all, and yet uh, we're, we have a task force working on it, and we're going to 
uh, get those repairs done and, and bring that up to snuff. During the time that I've been in office, I've uh, helped working always in collaboration with other people to build seven new schools in my district and over seven senior housing home, home areas uh, that will supply over 200 apartments for people who need them. Um, so I, I am really thrilled to be here. Yesterday I uh, went to the National Democratic uh, meeting for the National Party. My roommate is Debbie, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Who happens to be the uh, she happens to be the uh, head of the Democratic Party, so that was exciting to see her there. After uh, Al Gore invented the internet, so he says, we now have all new ways to communicate. We intend to take those ways to communicate out into the next uh, election using all the new high tech ways. And uh, we're working now not only in trying to build new jobs, but to take care of those people that are unemployed. Um, there are 1.6 million people in America that have lost their unemployment benefits and are really, really strapped. And uh, we want to extend the unemployment be benefits and, and, and uh, uh, raise the minimum wage. Many minimum wage workers work for large corporations where they literally receive training on how to access government benefits. Uh, it would be better just to pay them a living wage. Let them. Of not be in poverty, but pay them a living wage. So we're working hard to raise the minimum wage to $10.10. And, and uh, March is the year of the woman, and we're going to be celebrating uh, March as uh, Women's History Month. Uh, when I get back, I'm having a press conference next week with a bunch of Girl Scouts. And we're trying to get a women's museum. And, uh, we're working hard on that. Every year, I reintroduce the Equal Rights Amendment. I feel that women are half of our population. They hold up half the sky, half our society at least, and, and we need to make sure that they're part of the Constitution and that all of our laws about equality, equality of opportunity, equality of equal pay for equal work, that this is given to half of our population. Actually, we're more than half. We're 53% of the population of America, an even higher percentage of those who vote. Uh, so women are playing a very important part, uh, not only in the homes, at the kitchen table, but at all the tables, the peace table, all tables. Uh, right now, I'm incredibly concerned about the Ukraine. I'm sure you've been watching the, uh, the tensions in that area. And I know that Turkey is part of the international community that is trying to calm, calm the war in Syria and calm the tensions in Ukraine and, and try to bring uh, peace and justice uh, to, to the world. So um, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. I'd like to take any of your questions. Uh, just want to know if you're fired up and ready to go and this next election is coming forward. I don't care who your candidate is, but you should get involved and be part of the democratic process and run somebody from your group. Just get involved in American politics. So uh, I, I think it would be better if we had a dialogue and I, I could answer questions. And if anybody has a glass of water, I'd love it. Sure. I've been running around to meetings and I'm a little out of it. Anyway, oh great, like thank glass. you. Oh, yeah, this is fine. I'm fine. Okay. Hi. Um this is I have a question regarding the minimum wage. I know that President Obama signed an executive order for federal contractors already. And I was just curious to see if it's ever going to happen within this um, current partisan political climate, if the Congress will be able to pass a minimum wage increase. Well, that, that, is, a, that is a top uh, priority for the Democrats. We are staging really demonstrations around the country at, at low wage areas that, that um, usually the fast food areas, Walmart, they pay their people very little and give them no benefits. And in fact, they even have s seminars where they say, we understand you can't live on what you're making. Here are various government programs that you can apply to to help your, your family that is working full time for us and, and in poverty. And uh, I would say those uh, companies should pay their, their, their employees a living wage and, and give them a raise. And, and we're making a, a, a real big push on raising the minimum wage from, I think it's $7.50 to $10.10. Um, we're in the minority, meaning that we do not control the House of Representatives. We do control it in the Senate. Elections uh, make a difference. certainly makes a huge difference in, in policy, <coughs> and we'll continue to work on it. When President Obama was elected, the first bill he Signed into law was the so-called so Lilly Ledbetter Act. How many know what that is? 
that allows you to sue if you feel you're discriminated against in your pay. Very important for for women. The second bill that he signed into law was my bill that I authored called the Credit Card Bill of Rights. According to many economists and uh, think tanks, this bill saves you consumers over ten <coughs> billion dollars. There was another study three 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 months ago that said it saved you twenty billion dollars by just stopping unfair, deceptive practices. So that's an important bill. And uh, he, the president signed it into law. It passed under Democratic House and Senate. It would never have passed under a Republican one. So elections make a difference. They really do on how policies translate into your own life. We'll be working, but we don't control the majority. So uh, the, the Republicans have the power to block the, the, the raising of the minimum wage. And they have so far. And they say that they will continue to block it. Boehner made this incredible statement. He said, over my dead body, will there be a minimum wage increase? I thought that was a, you know, an extreme statement anyway.